Okay, so it's that time of year again. The season start, the first round is about a week away at this point of filming this. So it's that time of year where we've got to get our fantasy team picked for this season. And that's what we're going to do right now. Now, I always enjoy playing the fantasy series. And I know a lot of you guys do as well. And I do enjoy making this video each year. Let me know because in the past couple of seasons, I've not updated it as like a weekly thing or anything like that. It's a bit of a once and done. Along with my other regular videos between races, I do find it hard to sometimes on the short turnarounds, back-to-back -back races to get a video uploaded every week. So to add one of these in would be difficult. But if I do see enough support for it, I'll try and keep this updated throughout the season as regularly as I can. But I need to see tangible support. I need subscribes and likes. And if we get enough and there's enough support for it in the comments, let me know. We'll see if we can keep it updated a bit more regularly. If not, at, after every race, if we can, through a short or something. But at the very least, can we keep it updated every couple of races, if that's what you want to see. If not, I'm happy to just keep doing it like this one once at the start of the year, maybe do one at the end just to see how we went. But yeah, hit like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want to see more of these videos. Let's, uh, let's pick our team. We'll jump down into the computer screen here and see what we can come up with. All right, so here we are. We're into the main screen like we are every year. It looks very similar this year. I mean, it's exactly the same thing, I think. So same setup, same everything. I don't really know. I think the points are all the same. Um, you've still got your boosts three races a year, which I almost forgot to use them all last year. I didn't think I used one until about round 16, to be honest. So I just had to rush them in at the end. But here we are, four riders, two gold, two silver, a constructor, and a team. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay, how much we got to the same as every year? 15 million. I don't know. I like to start with riders. I don't know what you guys like to do. You like to just get Ducati in early, but um, yeah, let's see what we can come up with here. Is there any value in the field? That's what I like to look for. Is there any value? Is there anyone here who's like low priced and it's going to be like, well, they're obviously going to be awesome. Maybe Pedro. Maybe a lot of people going back Pedro in here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You know, Ralph Fernandez, big upturn might be a good silver rider. If you can get to grips with that Aprilia, it looks like in testing, he has a little. And is Bastianini the risk worth taking again this season? So let's have a look. Let's go. I don't want to miss out on Binder this year. I always miss out. I never get him. So let's see how this works out. If we Binder, and I mean, who's gone for Mark? Are you gone for Mark? I might go for Mark. I don't know. I always end up with him in my team at some point during the season. Martin, Peko, Mark, or Anaya. I want one of them. Let's just see how this works out. What can we afford if we do this? 8.5 left. No, it's not going to work. Maybe we don't take Binder. This is what I do every year. I always go, oh, yeah, maybe I don't need Binder. If I Bastianini, and maybe we do Binder. 9.2 left. We could get left out, left behind on a constructor, though. If we want that, that's only 5.8 left to get three things. <laughs> Not going to work. Like maybe this is in the season. Maybe I'll just back Fernandez to get to about two mil and then swap him out. See how this works. 2.9 left. See, we can get someone good for that. I think there's value in like an Oliveira, maybe a Franco this year. I think they can't go down in value. Pedro. And then later you can try and upgrade him. What are you just trying to get the best team in now? It's always hard. I think we could do that. If you sacrifice on team and constructor, I don't know where the points are coming from, but you can do this. Like, obviously, you can just, out of these three, then, you can just put them wherever you want them. But are you better off having a constructor scoring points than a silver rider? In which case, is it worth sacking one of these guys off? I wouldn't mind having a bit of salary left over as well, but like, track house has to improve. So I think we can maybe make money there. I think you're probably better off. Do you score more points with a constructor there than a half points from someone good? Let's take Ducati. I think you have to have it. This is 2.9. I really want to get Mark in there. I, look, I'm tempted to obviously go in with a Banyaya or a Martin or someone you think is going to win the race, right? But Binder, low key, picks up so many points because he qualifies like shit. And then he always makes up places in the race and finishing like in and around the podium. So he's a points machine. And if KTM is just at least the level it was at last season, which it may not be, but it, like, I mean, why? I have no reason so far to think otherwise. He's going to do that again. And look, if it, if it does work out to be a shit decision, come round two, we've got two trades. We can uh, swap the lad out for someone else. But going in without Banyaya or Martin makes me a little nervous, but we're going to maybe be a bit more aggressive this year and, and I hope that Bastianini actually does what he's supposed to do. Digi's a quiet shout here because Qatar. Like, can he just back to back it? No, I don't want to touch a Honda and I don't want to touch a Yamaha. So if we Digi, now should we swap one of these out? We can afford one of the big dogs. I think, like, Mark's going to be a shout, but I, I, I do honestly think it'll take a few Grand Prix to get him blisteringly quick. 
but he may get there. But I think, I mean, when Martin, Bagnaia, Bastianini, on the same bike, well, even more, well, up-to-date bikes, are going to be blistering out of the box. Yeah, and there's a shell. You know what? I'm going to leave that remaining salary. This is how I'm going to go and attack round one. Binder to make up places off the grid. Bastianini to be of the Bagnaia, Martin, Bastianini, sort of Marquez group of like which one's going to be amazing. I still don't know if I think it's going to be him, but I'm just going to back him because he costs less. And like I said, we've got two trades to make after round one. And then here, I'm just going for guys that I think might give me a bit of value in terms of like improving their value. And Digi, I, I, I'm not on the Digi train as much as everyone else, but just his form at Qatar from last season has me thinking he might, you know, lightning might strike twice. And again, if he improves his value, we can then use that to maybe get someone better in with the remaining salary we've got. Same with track house, and then Ducati is just to cover all bases. You got to have it. I think you've just got to have it. So that's it. That's where we're at. This is the team. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna take into the first round. Should I back it in now? I mean, if I change it, I'll let you know because practice might go a disaster for like KTM, for example. In which case, I'll probably try and swap that out last minute. Binder four, and because we've got so much salary left, with swapping him out three point six. I mean, we could just get in. Martin now. In fact, maybe I'll just do that. I mean, one of these big guys is going to crash this weekend and you don't want to be the one that has one. Martin, Bagnaia, Marquez, Bastianini, one of these front runners is probably going to have a crash this weekend in the main race and it's going to cost you a lot of points. But which one's it going to be? Maybe just while it's an unknown on KTM, I will just have Martin in there. And if KTM's actually good, I'll swap that. No, let's do this. (laughs) <laughs> change my mind again okay that's it i'm gonna settle on that let's leave that as it is just because i think these numbers may improve whereas these i don't think like they, they, they can obviously go higher if they just come out and win stuff but there's less of an upturn possibly and then later on we can maybe use that value and remaining salary to then bring in whoever's just dominating the championship after a few rounds we can just go for them gives us wiggle room there wiggle room so let's go with that. That's the fantasy team for this season. After practice, like I said, changes may be incoming. Anyway, share your teams with me down below if you want. If you don't want to give your team composition away, don't worry. But like I said, like and subscribe the video and comment if you want regular updates on this because I can do it as much as possible for you. Obviously, mate, like I said, on the short on the back-to-back races, I do struggle to sometimes even just get a video out with work and everything. But I can look to get it out as, as often as possible. Maybe after the double headers, I'll just... I'll do a video to at the end of a double header when there's a bit of a break in between to see if I can just update, see what I'm doing, even if it's just a short minute video. But I'm not going to do it for no views. So if you're going to watch it, let me know in the comments and I'll commit to it. And if not, I'm happy to just do this once a year. We'll recap at the end of the season or maybe mid-season and then again at the end of the season just to see how we're all going. And I don't have a league. So if you've got a league you want me to join, chuck your league code or whatever you do in the comments. I don't know what league I'm leagues in at the minute, but I'm going to join a few leagues that I see you know, people posting on there. Some other channels posting and things like that. If they've got leagues, I'll, I'll try and jump in them as well. So enjoy. Have fun. Don't take it too seriously because it can ruin your weekend watching the race. If your rider goes down, you're like, oh, fuck, 15 laps to go. I'm not going to enjoy this anymore. We've got exactly eight days and three minutes until we kick off here. So until we're locked out. So you've got plenty of time as of time of recording. See you on the next one.